Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. So here's the deal. I am home. I'm home in Louisiana. Last week I was in Oregon and it was um, a bittersweet trip, but ultimately a good trip. And it was important that I was able to be there with my family. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity and that I was able to go spend time with family last week in Oregon. Another thing that I did while I was in Oregon was receive the full collection of the Cabin Collection colorways. So if you uh, have been following along, you may be familiar with the upcoming Cabin Collection. I'm partnering with Kat and Penny Strickland of CZM Yarn. They have made 13 beautiful, beautiful colorways. And I'm very excited that I have this opportunity to share my family cabin with you in yarn form. So not only did I receive the full collection of skeins at my parents' house in Oregon, but I also had the opportunity to go with my mom and dad to our family cabin and spend a few hours there one day to get some footage of the skeins next to their namesakes or their inspiration um, that, you know, brought them about into yarn form. But now I'm back here in Louisiana and I have my bag full of cabin collection yarn. So I wanted to do something with my, my sweet skeins. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put the skeins up on my yarn wall because uh, they just need to be displayed. I do not want them just sitting in this bag. They're too beautiful and too special to me to do that. So I'm going to take a minute and I think I'll clear off the top half or like a little portion of the top because the bottom part is treehouse. Well, actually, if I'm looking at my yarn wall, I've worked through a lot of my treehouse skeins. So maybe I'll just, I'll see what I see. But basically, I'm gonna put these skeins on my yarn wall. So maybe I'll speed this up and give you like a voiceover and tell you a little bit more about the cabin. Okay, that sounds good. So uh, enjoy. Also, the chair is full of crap, okay? Sorry. I need to put this stuff away, but I'll, I'll get to it. Leave me alone. So a little background on the cabin. It is our family cabin and it was built in 1941. My great-grandfather was part of the building process, and I'm not sure if he commissioned it or if he built it himself, but I know that he was at the very least involved in the building process, whether he outsourced, um, and in fact, I know he did outsource some things, like for instance, a mason built the fireplace. My great-grandfather did not build the fireplace. Um, but anyway, it's been in our family since it was built in 1941. So it's very special to me and very special to so many members of my family. This is the place where we would go for weekend getaways, for spring break a lot of the time, 4th of July. Basically every summer also for uh, Labor Day, we would go to the cabin. And for me in Oregon, Labor Day was kind of the last hurrah of summer before school started. I know that schools um, start a lot earlier in other parts of the country, but for me, Labor Day was the last taste of summer. So we would go to the cabin, we would go school clothes shopping, and then I would spend hours on the deck of the cabin painting my nails so they would be perfect for the first day of school figuring out what outfit I would wear from my haul of new clothes. So anyway, all that to say, the cabin is such a special, magical place for me and my family. It's been in our family for years, for decades, and it's welcomed new faces with marriages and with the births of babies. Um, I mean, no one has been born actually within the walls of the cabin that I know of, but I mean, you know, bringing a new face to the cabin for vacation like anyway the cabin's older than me so I'm saying that I was a new face at one point even though um it's an institution in my life now so anyway the point is the cabin is so special and I hope that it can stay in our family and be special for many many years to come 
Okay, so I have the Cabin Collection yarn pretty much um, put up here. I don't really like that final result because um, I would love for the Cabin Collection to just be on a row, you know, by itself. Um, so I need to do some more reconfiguring. It kind of, I don't know, it messes with my brain when I have um, something from one thing on both rows. I would like, like to keep them all on um, the same row. So I'm going to try and, um, I know, I like, I don't know, like move, th move them around later, but that's a problem for later. Don't need to worry about it now. One skein that I did not hang up yet is the skein of Craft Nook. I really, really love this skein. It is inspired by the contact paper on the, uh, bottom of the Craft Nook we have at the cabin under the stairs and it's basically where the coloring books have lived my whole life and the crayons and stuff. And, oh, actually, hang on a second. So my mom made me this book of photos of when I was a kid and it was a gift she gave me before I went to college. And there's a specific photo I really wanna show you in here. If I can find it. Basically, the craft nook has been my home base, my hub, during our trips to the cabin. And it housed our craft supplies, you know, crayons, markers, coloring books. So this photo, I'll, I'll take like a clip and overlay it over this video. But basically, I would draw all sorts of pictures. I would color all the time and then I would stand in front of the cabin fireplace and show off my, you know, masterpieces, my pieces of art. So the craft nook is very special to me. And the skein that Kat dyed inspired by the photos I sent her of the craft nook contact paper are I just like she did such a such an amazing job and I'm really impressed and really in love with the yarn. So I thought this would make a great project for me to work on today. Initially, I was thinking maybe I would make a pair of socks out of cabin yarn today, but guess what? It's almost September, which means it's basically fall, right? That's probably how it works, I think. Uh, I hope. So I'm going to try and make something else besides socks on my circular sock machine. I'm going to try to make a pumpkin. I think this is going to make the perfect pumpkin with that creamy base and then the splashes of orange and yellow and you know it's just like such a good autumnal color I think. So yeah let's crank this into a pumpkin. Okay let's go. Okay, I have made it to my cranking station, AKA two steps across the room, and I have Craft Nook all wound up on cone form. It looks really, really cute on the cone. So now we're gonna make a pumpkin, or I should say I'm gonna make a pumpkin and you're gonna watch and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I've never used my circular sock machine to make a pumpkin, but I have made a pumpkin on my Centro knitting machine, which is a larger um, knitting machine and uses like worsted weight yarn. So I know how to accomplish a pumpkin on a circular knitting machine, um, but not necessarily on a sock machine, but I think that it's pretty much, you know, the same situation. So I'm just going to go with my gut and hopefully it gets me where I want to go. So let me adjust the camera so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing down here on the machine. Okay, so if you've seen my cranking videos before, you know that I need to start by applying some dry lube. So I did that. And in my mind, I think that I thought that I had a 48 needle cylinder on my machine, but it's actually a 54 needle cylinder. So I'm putting this setup on it on, initially thinking it's the correct size, but quickly finding out it's not. So I'm taking that setup bonnet off and I will put the correct size setup bonnet. Um, I think that 
it would be really cute to make a pumpkin with a size 72 cylinder but I just wanted to go ahead and give it a try with the size that was already on my machine so based on the size cylinder you use that is going to make the circumference of your tube uh, wider or narrower so a 72 needle cylinder would make it the widest that I can make it on my machine so I think I'll try that next to make a larger pumpkin than when I got with this experiment but still really happy with how that turned out anyway let's focus so this blue yarn is waste yarn and I'm doing that so there's a separation between my working yarn and the setup bonnet then that pink thread is called a ravel cord and now I am adding the working yarn which is craft nook I put quite a bit of excess of the yarn in the tube before I started cranking because I know that I'm going to need a long piece of string in order to secure the stitches on the end of the tube. So I think I cranked about 60 rows or so, yep, says 60 on my row counter, and now I'm going to add a few more rows of waste yarn on the other end of the tube, and that's going to protect my live stitches of Craft Nook, which is my working yarn, to then complete the next step, which I'll tell you about here. Okay, so with this project, basically I've made a short tube. So I'm gonna start by turning it inside out. And what I need to do is thread my long tail through a tapestry needle, and I'm going to use the tail to pick up every single stitch around the circumference of the tube. And what that does is simply place all of those stitches on the same piece of yarn, the same thread, and then once all of the stitches are picked up across the circumference of the tube, or around the circumference of the tube, I should say, then I am going to pull the tail tightly to cinch up the bottom of the tube. And uh, this can take a long time depending on how many stitches you have to do. Right now this clip that you're seeing is in uh, double speed so it's going twice as fast and it still doesn't like blow your mind with the quickness so you can get an idea that's kind of a slower more meditative part of the process when you are machine knitting you still do need to use your hands to go slowly to complete some parts of the process so I'm just going around picking up stitches one by one being mindful not to miss any and this is where it's really important to make sure that your waste yarn is a high contrast color compared to your working yarn. If I had used a bare color yarn or a yellow yarn or an orange yarn, there may have been stitches that would be difficult to distinguish the working yarn from the waste yarn. So by using this really deep blue color there's not really any room for error or question of which stitch belongs to my working yarn the craft note color way so I can be sure that I'm picking up the correct stitch now I mentioned the pink thread earlier that's called the ravel cord and this is basically a nylon cord a nylon thread and because it is nylon it is not as sticky as the yarn meaning uh, it can slide out much more easily so ravel cords are really handy when you are using a circular sock machine simply because you can usually pull them out from the tube and quickly separate the working yarn from the waste yarn so if you don't use a ravel cord you may have to snip somewhere on the waste yarn and kind of unravel the connecting row that moves from waste yarn to working yarn. But with the ravel cord, you kind of have, it's basically a rip cord. You can separate those two uh, sections quickly and efficiently and easily just by tugging on that nylon cord. So when you order your Dean and Bean sock machine, it comes with Ravel cord. I wanted um, some extra, so I got this pink one on Amazon and it's been working really well for me. So I'm almost towards the end of 
going around the circumference of the bottom of the tube and I'll show you how to separate the main color from the waste yarn by pulling on that ravel cord here in just a second. So now I'm just taking my pick tool and I'm pulling out a part of the pink and I'm tugging on it and then I kind of hit a roadblock so I pull from the other side. I found that was smoother and there you go. You can see that all of my live stitches are now secure on that tail. I just threaded through each stitch of the craft nut colorway and by pulling out the ravel cord you can really quickly separate the working yarn from the waste yarn and remove your setup on it. So definitely recommend using ravel cords. Now I need to do the same thing on the other side. So for this side, I don't have a ravel cord, which is not really a big deal because there's not a setup bonnet attached to this other end. So it's not necessarily as important to have a ravel cord on this end. But again, I'm just going through stitch by stitch, threading that tail through. If you don't leave a long tail, you can just grab a new piece of yarn and secure it to the tail once you get to the beginning of, um, you know, wherever the tail left off. But I like to use a long tail just so I already have that excess built in to secure all these stitches. So by putting the thread through the stitches, it makes it so when I remove that black waist yarn, none of these stitches will drop. They will all be secured and they'll all have, you know, a little thread to hang on to. So I don't have to worry about any drop stitches or unraveling with my finished item. So just like before, I'm just going to go all the way around. So let me speed up this other um, part of this video so we can get to the next part. Okay, so I have picked up each of the stitches and this end is already cinched up, not all the way, but partially. And before I cinch this end up, I'm gonna fill it with some polyfill. If you don't have polyfill, another great option for filling up things that need stuffing is to use your yarn scraps, but I'm accumulating mine and saving them for when I visit Hedgehog Fibers in October. If you save up enough and it weighs a certain amount, you can get a discount. So I'm saving my yarn scraps for that and I already have this polyfill, so I might as well use it. But once you have it full as you want it and you're cinching up the ends, I'm just kind of reinforcing it. It's more, you know, art than science. I'm just kind of putting the needle wherever I can fit it in and then threading it through. Anyway, when you switch, when you, when you switch. Okay, Rachel, get it together. When you cinch up the top and bottom, you will see that there are ridges around where you've cinched it up. So you're just kind of going to follow the flow of those ridges and thread your long tail or a new piece of working yarn uh, around the tube or what is now kind of becoming a little glob and you're going to bring it from the ridge from top to bottom. So following those ridge lines, uh, bring it from top to bottom and pull tight and that's kind of going to create those quadrants or sections that you would see on a pumpkin and you might notice that they kind of look ugly at the beginning. Just trust the process. It'll be okay. You can also adjust them by kind of rearranging the the stuffing and uh, reconfiguring where that line rests on your pumpkin. But once you're happy with how it looks, just tie a knot really tightly and then poke the excess tails through the pumpkin and snip off the extra and squish them in and there you go. Look, just like that, my sweet little pumpkin is cranked and it needs one last touch so I grabbed some cinnamon sticks from my pantry. Since this is a smaller pumpkin, I'm gonna get a thinner cinnamon stick. This will work. And I think it would look absurd to use this full cinnamon stick. So I'm just going to snap it, snap a little piece off. I just got this tiny little piece it's a little uneven, but that's totally fine. And then the next thing that I'm gonna use to finish this off is my hot glue gun. I got this glue gun on Amazon years ago. 
Um, I'm not sure when, um, but years ago. And I really like it because it has something I've never seen on a glue gun before, which is this on off switch, which is really handy, um, I think, because usually with the glue guns, at least the ones I used or grew up with, once you plug it in, it's on. So there are pros and cons to that, but I really appreciate the fact that I can toggle the switch on and off on this glue gun. So I'm gonna plug it in and get it warmed up. While the glue gun is warming up, I'll tell you why I don't really care that I broke off an uneven piece of this cinnamon stick. So when I put it in the pumpkin, since the pumpkin is yarn and it's full of polyfill, it has give, there is squish to it. So I can just poke the cinnamon stick in as far as I need it to go to hide that difference in height. And actually I could even use the flush um, end of it and glue that piece in and then it looks maybe a little bit more natural but um, I'm, I think I'll go that way well yeah I'm gonna do it so the uneven part is not visible but I think I'm gonna glue it in a little slanted so it just looks I don't know a little bit more Haphazard is the wrong word, but I don't know, a little bit more natural and organic versus, uh, I don't know, something manufactured. We're not going for the uh, perfection vibe. We're going for a rustic, homey, comfy, cozy vibe. So I think that will be just fine. And I'm just adjusting some of the strands on the outside that are serving to make the pumpkin shape because some sections need just a little bit extra help being shaped I think to make it have the look I really want at the end of the day. Let's see if this will have glue come out. Yep glue is coming out. I've got just the right amount I need and I'm just gonna plop that cinnamon stick in. And you can even squish your pumpkin together as you're setting your stick. If you don't have cinnamon sticks, you could just go grab a stick from your yard. It's not, not that serious. And look, ta-da, finished pumpkin. This is the cutest little thing. So this is Cranked Up in Craft Nook from the Cabin Collection, which is an upcoming collection. I'm gonna talk your ear off about it, but an upcoming collection that I am making um, by partnership with Cat and Penny Strickland of CZM Yarn. So they do all the dyeing. I provided the inspiration photos and the cabin collection theme. Um, and then, yeah, this skein is after my beloved craft nook. So there you go. I'm gonna add this to my collection of fall decor and put this out actually right away because I love fall. So, so there, all right. There you go. Do you like my pumpkin? I hope you do. And if you don't, keep it to yourself because I want to hear it because I really like it. And don't don't yuck my yum. Okay, anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And if you want to be notified of my next upload, you can hit that notification bell. And last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. Okay, bye. Happy pumpkining. See you next time.